In the heart of Georgia, tragedy strikes. The murder of Augusta University student Lakin Riley sends shockwaves across the nation, igniting a fiery political storm. Lakin Riley, a promising 22-year-old nursing student, met a gruesome fate while on a routine jog at the University of Georgia campus. Her life cut short by blunt force trauma wounds. The accused, Jose Ibarra, a 26-year-old undocumented migrant from Venezuela, lurking in the shadows of the southern border. A man with a past shrouded in darkness. But this isn't just a tale of one tragic night, it's a story intertwined with missed opportunities and broken systems. As the nation mourns, political tensions flare, and former President Donald Trump is lashing out at the tragic killing, painting a grim picture of a nation under siege. A board invasion is destroying our country, he proclaims, vowing to unleash the largest deportation of illegal criminals in American history. But amidst the political rhetoric, one fact remains clear. Lake and Riley's life was stolen, a promising future extinguished by senseless violence. As the nation grapples with grief and anger, one question echoes. How many more lives must be sacrificed before real change is made? Sky News Digital Originals presents Border Tragedy, the death of Lake and Riley. A young woman, 22 years old, named Lakin Riley, who was at the University of Georgia nursing school, was murdered in broad daylight. She went for a run between the hours of 9 a.m. and noon or 1 p.m. and was attacked, brutally attacked, for the fun of it, is how it looks, by an illegal immigrant. No murders on this campus in 30 years. What changed? Our open border, that's what changed. This guy came in, we now know, in 2022, under Joe Biden's presidency came right across the border claiming he needed asylum from Venezuela. And he happened to have a wife. And so, boy, you could have a wife. They're never going to track you down. They're not even tracking down the single men who are of fighting age, which this guy is. Uh, but he has a wife, and they were going to seek asylum because Venezuela is so hard and they, could, they didn't want to be there. And what they decided to do was take the life of this young woman after he committed at least two other crimes. But he wasn't deported. He was set loose by, I think it was the NYPD, before ICE could even slap a detainer on him, not that the NYPD would have responded to it because New York is a sanctuary city. So they don't cooperate with the federal immigration authorities who say, hey, hold him, hold him till we can get him and deport him, which they never really say anyway, because we're not deporting people. But in any event, it was a failure of this young woman by virtually every government authority that there is. And it's just time for this to stop. I, I'm sick, I, I've covered so many young women of this age who wind up murdered by illegal immigrants, um, you know, Kate Steinle out in San Francisco, Molly Tibbetts in the Midwest, and now Lakin Riley here. These are all similarly aged girls who get attacked out of nowhere or shot dead out of nowhere by someone who had no business being here and whose presence we ignored and felonies we ignored, sometimes deported multiple times, five times in the case of the one woman's Kate Steinle. And every time we say, mm, it's sad, but really, can't change policy in response to this one crime or these two crimes or these three and on and on it goes. Well, I just want to offer my condolences, thoughts and prayers to Lakin's family. I talked to his parents, John and Allison last night. As you can imagine, they are just struck with grief. They're heartbroken and they're also like I am. They're upset and they're mad and, and outraged at this incident that happened. We shouldn't be surprised to see these types of results. And I, my heart goes out to the Riley family. This is unacceptable. We failed as a government. This government, Joe Biden, this administration, Mayorkas, they failed by stopping the, not stopping this guy and sending him back to his country. Um, yeah. And then he got in trouble in New York. He got in trouble in Georgia. Many opportunities to send this guy back, but he was still here. Now, I don't think there's any way that Joe Biden can wiggle out of the crisis that's happened, even just politically, over the course of uh, this last couple of years during his time. Uh, I don't think, you know, be because it's already happened. I think that's probably one of the biggest parts here. It doesn't matter necessarily what happens from now until November. Obviously, it helps him if the border numbers go down from now until November when the presidential election happens. But no matter what, Donald Trump has, and, and immigration, by the way, is one of Donald Trump's signature issues. It's one of the reasons that he first 
uh, catapulted to uh, success in the Republican primary all the way back in 2015, because he was talking about immigration from a hardline conservative perspective. And even Republicans at the time were afraid to talk about it that way. We actually saw a similar dynamic play out all these years later, just when Senate Republicans were debating legislation over the last couple of weeks. So this is Donald Trump's strongest issue. And Joe Biden, just by the way that he's governed, uh, we're north of 5 million people that have come into the country, migrants that have given have been given entrance into the country and are currently still in this country. Some numbers have that closer to 10 million. Uh, those numbers are crazy for Joe Biden to defend, and they've already happened. So he can you know, try to, it, it definitely helps him to try to sort of stanch the flow over the next several months, but he can't undo uh, what happened over the course of his time. And another, just really quickly, another story that highlights that is the young girl who was killed in Georgia. Uh, this has been getting a lot of media coverage by a migrant who was here illegally, should have been deported for criminal violations, uh, came into the country in recent years. It, every time that happens uh, going forward, that's going to be, this is this is part of the problem that Joe Biden has and that there have already been millions of people uh, with dubious asylum claims let into the country um, as migrants under his time in office. So every time, you know, there's there's something like this that comes up, that's going to go right back to Joe Biden from now until November. People across America are waking up to the crisis at the southern border. Poll after poll indicating this will be a red hot issue when the people of America cast their vote in November. Just this week, President Joe Biden made a rare visit to the border, only his second visit since taking office. I understand my predecessor's legal pass today. So here's what I would say to Mr. Trump. Instead of playing politics with this issue, instead of telling members of Congress to block this legislation, join me, or I'll join you in telling the Congress to pass this bipartisan border security bill. We can do it together. You know and I know. It's the toughest, most efficient, most effective border security bill this country has ever seen. So instead of playing politics with the issue, why don't we just get together and get it done? On the same day, Republican nominee hopeful Donald Trump also made a trip to the border, capitalising on a key political issue that helped him get elected in 2016. Every time you hear the term migrant crime, you know where that comes from, allowing thousands and thousands and actually millions and millions of people to come could be 15 million could be 18 million by the time he uh, gets out of office biden and trump heading to the border on the same day signifies how contentious the southern border crisis is becoming with the death of lake and riley a reminder of the threat posed by the unfolding situation i really see the the numbers changing this is becoming one of the most important issues to democrats which we've never seen before not in recent history anyway. And there's a reason Joe Biden and Donald Trump about 300 miles apart, but they're both going to the southern border. And this is, you know, the same administration that told us there's no problem at the border. The border's closed. The border's secure. And now President Biden has to go down personally because he realizes his reelection is definitely on the line over this issue. I mean, he will be bounced out of office if these numbers continue. And really, honestly, at this point, even if they don't, like people know he can try to look like he cares. He can try to look like it was the Republicans who scuttled that bill because they don't care about the border. People know the truth. You look back under Trump in 2020, we had 400,000 people cross the southern border, which is 400,000 too many. But this past year, we've had 3 million under Joe Biden. There's been almost no attempt at enforcement. They're coming into the country with fentanyl, drugs, with young women who are being raped and exploited by the coyotes and the drug cartels and they're murdering our people. This woman was a 22-year-old healthy woman out for a jog, staying healthy so she could become a nurse and take care of others. Universally praised as a lovely, delightful, kind and loving person, cut down in the prime of her life by this loser, derelict criminal who we rolled out the red carpet for to come into this country. I'm sure we're gonna hear stories about us giving him a hotel and food stamps and probably a plane ticket to wherever he wanted to go. And, and for what? So he could murder our most promising, our best and our brightest. And what's the accountability? Who cares if he goes to prison? I don't even care. I want him out. I want them all out. I want them to get back to their own countries and they can terrorize the people of Venezuela instead of the United States where we used to be a country of law and order. 
you know, I've made five trips to the border like a lot of other Republican governors. We've raised the issue of, of the problems with an unsecure southern border for well over two years now, really at the start of the Biden administration because the change in policies uh, that have led us to where we are, where we now have, you know, millions of people, seven and a half, eight and a half, however many million people that have come into our country. And then you have people like these two individuals that came into the country and then cr committed crimes. It's going now, I think, especially because polling has found, uh, there was a Gallup poll actually just released this week that found immigration is now what Americans say is the biggest problem facing the country. Uh, so, you know, when you're asked to rank which issues are the biggest problems facing the country by Gallup, uh, people actually are now putting economy, put, putting immigration above the economy, putting immigration above uh, every other issue, 28% of the country right now says it's the most important issue. And why do they think that? Well, because the numbers that we've seen over the course of the Biden administration have become very, very hard for President Biden himself to ignore. And it's become more high profile as uh, leaders in the House and the Senate have been negotiating over Ukraine funding, Israel funding, uh, because House Republicans and Senate conservatives insist on uh, funding for the border and actually on a bill that would uh, dramatically change the way that border security in the United States works, uh, the media has been talking nonstop about immigration. So uh, it's just, you know, Joe Biden has seen high numbers throughout his presidency. They aren't at their very peak right now. Uh, that was, you know, late last year. They were just hitting records, it seemed like, every single day. Uh, but because it's become a political football, it sort of forced the media to cover the issue in a way that Joe Biden now feels like he really has to deal with. I mean, this is a federal issue. This is an issue that the president can take action on. And I know he's trying to blame, you know, inaction in Congress. That is passing the buck. We know that there's things that he can do. The, the Republican governors that were at the border just weeks ago stand ready to help him do that. We stand ready to send National Guard resources and let's secure our border and make sure this doesn't happen again. We're seeing a rash of, of home burglaries here from Chilean gangs, from Venezuelan gangs. Talked to sheriffs out in Michigan. They were seeing the same thing. And look, Trace, I'm a 287G jail, which means that we work hand in hand with ICE. When mm -hmm. somebody is arrested that's here in this country illegally, we notify ICE. ICE will then put a detainer on them. We used to have maybe eight of 10 of the people that were arrested here for crimes in our country were being turned mm -hmm. over to ICE. Do you know how many are being turned over to ICE now? Zero. No. ICE is taking none of them. I actually went to Matamoros and to Brownsville a couple of years ago and talked to a pastor who runs a migrant shelter there who was imploring. He said in regular meetings that he would have uh, with you know American officials, people in the Biden administration, he and other people running shelters would implore the administration to tell people just not to come. Uh, and so what we saw last year when Joe Biden went to the border was the city of El Paso, which is right across from Juarez, was totally cleaned up. And Biden didn't actually meet with a migrant. He went to a shelter, but he didn't actually meet migrants and hear their stories. So Donald Trump, who's a master again of this issue and of the media, uh, will likely have a much better, whatever it is, photo op, uh, media opportunity, whatever it is uh, that he does in, in Mexico will obviously, or in, in Texas, that is Brownsville, uh, will, will obviously be better for him than whatever Joe Biden either does, because if Joe Biden actually confronts the truth of this issue, he's going to be talking to uh, migrants, people who run these shelters, who see human trafficking with every single migrant. Every migrant pays a cartel to cross uh, with very, very few exceptions. Everyone does it. So if he, if he confronts this issue honestly, he's confronting an incredible failure of his, his own policy. Uh, human trafficking on a vast scale, uh, drug smuggling on a vast scale, kidnappings, uh, sexual violence on a vast scale. And uh, I don't think that's what Joe Biden is going down there to do. So if he doesn't confront the issue honestly, then again, he has a disastrous appearance like he did last year when he went to El Paso and the streets. Suddenly, uh, they had been you know it, filthy and uh, covered with the huddled masses, people in, in desperate situations, migrants who are uh, you know, in desperate situations, they all were cleaned up from the streets. So that's not good for Joe Biden either. I mean, it's a catch-22 of his own making.
everyone knows the border has been ridiculous since Biden came into office with more than 7 million illegal border encounters. Have a listen to these people interviewed by Fox News. These are illegal immigrants being asked, who do they prefer, Donald Trump or Joe Biden? No prizes for guessing who they like. Mejor para el inmigrante ilegal, uh, Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Joe Biden. Joe Biden. And what is mejor, Trump or Joe Biden? John Biden, de igual manera. Joe Biden. Trump or Joe Biden? Eh, John Biden. Joe, Trump or Joe Biden? John Biden. Joe Biden. Trump or Joe Biden? Es el Joe Biden. Thank Joe Biden. Now, the incredible thing is, while that is happening, and clearly they love Joe Biden because he does everything for them, right? Oh. You get a free hotel, you get free food, you get a credit card with money already your put on Your bed made, it. your food cooked. It's, it's a good great. life. But at the same time, the latest Gallup poll has shown 55% of Americans regard illegal entrants or, or illegals as a major security threat, not just to security, but to their economy, mm -hmm. uh, to social cohesion. And so the Biden administration are doing this, but again, Americans are waking up that uh, they know why it's happening and they're not happy about it. Well, exactly. I mean, look, uh, like you said, no prizes for guessing what they were going to say. It's I mean, you know, the other bloke wants to build the wall, right? So they wouldn't be in the country if, if uh, Trump was in charge. And that's the point, right? You bring as many of them in as you can by whatever means possible. I mean, you know, here in Australia, we do it by legal means. We just up the migrant intake, up the wazoo, and we'll bring in 500,000 people totally legally. Nothing well, to worry about 737,000 last even, year. Even I imagine they'll all be voting for our even, vote. Even better. Um, but over there, you just let them walk over the border. And then when states, as we've talked about before, try to take action to stop these people walking over the border, because it's not Joe Biden who has to deal with the consequences of them walking across the border. It's the states that yeah. it ultimately falls upon that have to stump up the money to deal with these people. When Texas dares to say, oh, well, hang on, we're going to put up a bit of wire to stop people coming in, the Biden administration marches down there and says, you must take that wire down. I mean, you could not get any more obvious at what they're playing at. It's you? completely and utterly intentional. Uh, so many Americans know that this is invasion by design. He yeah. has presided over this. He has facilitated this. In New York alone, the mayor's just come out saying he's budgeted budgeted rather, $12 billion between now and the 2025 end of financial yeah. year to house the 173,000 and counting, because they're still coming, illegal migrants in New York alone. Can you imagine how furious you would be to be a taxpayer in New York knowing this is where your money's going? And yet, yeah. There are lots of questions to be answered around the tragic death of Lake and Riley and around the accused. 26-year-old Jose Ibarra is facing seven serious charges. The charges include malice murder, aggravated battery and kidnapping. Immigration and Customs Enforcement have confirmed that Jose Ibarra entered the US illegally in 2022 near El Paso, Texas. And just last year, he was arrested in New York City. How Ibarra was able to enter and stay in America is of serious concern. The situation at the southern border is having deadly consequences. Americans deserve to have their questions answered.